So this is a question I received about uh, some speech of Muhammad Hijab in an interview he had with a non-Muslim and the non-Muslim asked as to why Allah is referred to with uh, the pronoun he and whether Allah is a man and the answer given by Muhammad Hijab is that Allah is a thing or the thing and also it these are the words that were used so a question has come as to whether there is any kind of issue in this speech or any precaution and so th- this can be answered in uh, numerous uh, points uh, so the first point is really what is the ruling on using words which are not from the beautiful names al asmaul husna and the lofty attributes. So uh, Ibn al-Qayyim and likewise Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, uh, they explain that uh, as it relates to al-ikhbar, al-ikhbar anhu, speaking about Allah, this is obviously a much broader, uh, much broader subject area than the names and the attributes. They are restricted to a text. And outside of whatever is restricted to a text, then only words should be used which, which are good, which are hasan. And if they are not hasan, then they should not be evil. If there's no evil in them, then it would be permissible to use that word. And from the examples that enter into that, a word such as shay, a thing, and that, meaning an essence, having an essence, and mawjud, meaning existing. These types of words, the ruling on them is that it is permissible to use these words, but they're not used in the ordinary uh, sense, like in, in, in ordinary discussion. You wouldn't use these words to, to describe Allah because there's no, there's no praise in these words. And, you know, you would not invoke Allah by these words, obviously. Um, you invoke Allah by his uh, beautiful names, as is uh, commanded in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا So this is the first thing then, that this speech, or this, these words, شَيْءْ Mawjud, these are permissible to, to use. The second point would be that the word شَيْءْ is a very, it, it's the most general word that can apply to everything uh, that, that exists because its meaning is so broad and so general that it encompasses everything. So everything that exists is a thing, a thing. After this, the word shay uh, has been used in the Qur'an. This is something that the Messenger of Allah Wasallam was ordered to say to the polytheists uh, because they were asking, you know, who, who is a witness? Who can vouch for you? And we don't see, you know, the Jews or the Christians or anyone else vouching for you, you know, testifying uh, for you. And so the Messenger of Allah Wasallam was ordered to say, قُلْ أَيُّ شَيْءٍ أَكْبَرُ شَهَادَةٍ Who is greatest in, in being a witness and giving a testimony? And it, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, Allah Azawajal is referred to as uh, a shay a thing and similarly Imam Ahmed in his refutation of the Jahmiyyah uh, he says that you know these Jahmiyyah should be asked the question uh, is Allah a thing is Allah a shay and so if they say no Allah is not a shay Allah is not a thing then this is non-existence and if they say yes Allah is a shay Allah is a thing but he is unlike other things then what issue do you have in affirming for Allah all the other things, all the other descriptions, uh, such as Allah being uh, the all-wise, al-hakim, and Allah having mercy, rahmah, and Allah, you know, all the other names and attributes. And that's because the Jahmiyyah uh, did not want to affirm anything positive, any name, attribute, description for Allah, out of fear that he may be likened to created things. And so the question is posed, well, is Allah a thing? Is Allah a thing? 
and uh, this is in the course of argument and debate in order to show the futility of what they are upon. So we see here that the word shay is used uh, in specific situations for a specific reason. Uh, although the word shay itself doesn't have anything praiseworthy, so what this shows is that yes, the word shay just like the word that and the word mawjood and whatever words are similar, they are permissible to use. And that would be in specific context. You wouldn't use that in the ordinary, normal, routine sense because we speak about Allah with what he spoke uh, about himself, meaning here the beautiful names. And because these names and these attributes, they, they are beautiful, they are lofty, they comprise uh, meanings. Uh, which which are praiseworthy, and so that's the, that's obviously the, the the asal. So after that point, then the next thing is using the word it, um, the, the word it. Now in English, um, and and numerous uh, languages, there are we have numerous what what they what they call genders genders of nouns, and there's also something called uh, a neuter neuter noun. And this is something which is neither, you know, uh, masculine uh, nor feminine. So, but the word it, it is somewhat, um, you know, we could say that it's not really befitting uh, to use this word for Allah, it, because it is somewhat kind of belittling and, and demeaning. In these languages which do have a new gender, we tend to refer to uh, inanimate things uh, as it and even even animals uh, such as cats or dogs uh, and things like that you know as as an it in in the course of uh, speech in the course of language it wouldn't really be a good word uh, to use also from the points that can be added that when you say allah is the thing the thing so allah is a thing shay and allah is the thing then there would be some precaution in that because, once again, the meaning of shay is so broad and so general that it applies to everything which exists. And if you say Allah is the thing, the thing, it's almost like you know you're saying Allah is the existence. There's no meaning to saying to saying that. There's no there's no meaning in shay that distinguishes one thing from another. So by saying Allah is the thing, there's really no meaning uh, to that. And if anything, it could even, it could be like a preliminary kind of stepping stone into leading into, for example, Allah's existence is the existence because he is the thing. So uh, there's some precautions in, in saying that. And also, you know, when you say Allah is the creator, Allah is the all-wise, al-hakim. Allah is the all-powerful, al-qadir. Now this is very different to saying, you know, shay and a shay thing and the thing. Because here there are, there are meanings in these uh, words. Uh, there are meanings in these words and these meanings are praiseworthy. And when we use these words with, with a definite article, Al-Hakim, Al-Sami' Al-Basir, Al-Alim. Uh, we are making Allah unique in uh, the perfection of these meanings, the perfection of these attributes. Whereas with Shay and a Shay, uh, there is there is no meaning. Uh, it's the most generalized term that can apply to everything in existence, and there isn't any kind of. Uh, uh, meaning. We could say that shay really means something that exists, so really it's mawjood. And if you say there's mawjood and al mawjood, you know, Allah is mawjood, but Allah exists, but He is the one that exists. So it kind of leads to some kind of ambiguity, really. So you wouldn't say Allah is the thing. You can say Allah is a shay, Allah is a thing in the context of a, of a discussion when it is uh, required. But you wouldn't then say Allah is the thing, uh, because that, that leads to this kind of ambiguity. I think that's what can be said in uh, brief 
Now, obviously, it's understandable for a, for a non-Muslim to ask a question like this, um, who wouldn't know these kind of issues. But the, the question itself is kind of really uh, baseless. To give some examples, uh, like, like the word lugha, when we say lughatun, the word which refers to language in Arabic, lugha is a feminine noun. Is a feminine noun. And so for this feminine noun, we would use the pronoun here. Um, so we don't say language. Do we say language is feminine? Language is a female? We don't say language is a female. Uh, but, but the word, the ism, the, the noun, lugha, is considered feminine in, in grammar, in, in language. And in the same way, Allah, Allah, the name Allah is a masculine noun. But Allah himself, as for Allah himself, then he's neither male nor female. For example, shajara is, is a feminine noun, refers to a tree. But we don't say, is the tree a man or a woman, uh, a pregnant woman? When we refer to a pregnant woman, when we describe a pregnant woman, we say that she is hamil, hamil. But this is a masculine noun. This is not a feminine noun. We say she is hamil. Now we don't say here, is the woman a man? Just because the noun being used to describe her is actually masculine. So hence this is purely uh, a linguistic thing. Languages vary. Uh, some languages accommodate what they call or they have what they call a neuter, a neuter nouns or neuter gender, which is things which are neither masculine uh, nor feminine. And some languages, they divide everything into either masculine or feminine in terms of the nouns used to describe those things. Um, Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of all things. You know, created everything in pairs. Uh, hence we have... Uh, for example, light and darkness, uh, we have sweet and bitter, we have heavens and earth, we have hot and cold, we have night and day. And likewise, we have male and female in the, the biological uh, sense, biological sex, the male and uh, the female. But the, the pronoun and the nouns in themselves do not you know, universally indicate male or female biological sex, right? And we've given examples to, to prove that in the language. You know, there are feminine nouns, lugha, shajara, and so on and so forth. But we don't say that language or tree is, is a woman or is feminine in the sense of the, the, the biological kind of reality. Um, and conversely, we refer to pregnant women as hamil. A pregnant woman as hamil, which is a masculine noun. So we don't say, well, is a pregnant woman a man? Um, you know, unless you're living in the 21st century in Western social uh, democracies uh, who've entered into this uh, uh, foolishness and stupidity of uh, rejecting the biological basis of, of, of sex, of, of males and females. And this is really a means to an end for them. Uh, it's not something that they believe in. Uh, in reality, this is really coming from the, the Marxists and the communists, and it's just a way of destroying the notion of private property because that's what the real intention behind all of this is, to destroy the family, destroy the relationships of blood because uh, of the w w what this has of the preservation of wealth and the uh, continuation of wealth, uh, private property. So... With, with blood relations, you have inheritance and uh, wealth is passed on from generation to generation. And this is hated by uh, the Marxists and the communists. And to enslave people, you have to destroy the notion of private property. And for that reason, uh, the whole idea of, uh, well, this transgender, homosexuality, and, you know, it, it's, it's not something that the people who promote these ideas and invent these ideas, they actually believe to be true. No, it's a means of poisoning the minds of uh, the population, the society, so that it's easier thereafter to justify the abolition of, of private property. 
uh, basically to turn them into into slaves. So even even they don't really believe these things are true and real. It's just a means of uh, manipulation. Anyhow, sorry about that uh, uh, diversion. Coming back to the point, you know, there, there are many things that have no connection to biological sex, inanimate things, stones, mountains, things which are conceptual, uh, such as the concept of knowledge, justice, wisdom. We don't say these things are masculine or feminine. We don't say they are male or female. But as far as the nouns, the words which are used, then this is a matter of, of convention. Different languages have different ways of dealing with these things. Some languages treat everything, every noun, as masculine or feminine. Uh, the asal the basis is that it is masculine unless it has the signs of femininity. So in the Arabic language, uh, the ta marbuta, the, the ta, which is added at the end of a word, is a sign of a noun being feminine. Uh, so, so some languages have, have, have that, everything is masculine or feminine, and other languages, they, you know, they, they have a, what they call a neuter noun uh, that they use to refer to things such as like a pencil or, or a carpet or a table it doesn't doesn't have a, a gender like it's not masculine or feminine uh, even the word she itself the word she itself is a masculine noun so again you're not really going to escape this issue uh, she is a masculine noun but it's the noun that's masculine right so you know we can say that a pen is a she a man is a she and the table is a she and so even though the word she is masculine, it does not mean that the pen is a male and the table is a male, but the man is a male. And that's because of the reality of the man. It's the reality of the man. Right? He's a biological male. And so what this shows is that anything we refer to as she, then it has its own reality. And the word she is simply just a label, uh, which happens to be again masculine uh, and it also has a very general broad meaning uh, that covers everything in existence um, so com coming back to the issue then really I mean there's no precaution in saying shay that Allah is a thing uh, when there's a need to do so in the likes of this type of situation however you would not say Allah is the thing Th there's some precaution in, in, in that speech and also saying it is like the neuter gender in you know languages like, like English um, you know you say about a pencil it you say about the table it it can be considered it's not really the best of words uh, to describe Allah to say Allah is an it uh, but obviously the intent here is is uh, to point out the the type of noun there are certain nouns which are which are neuter so I think these really are the, are the main issues, uh, to be honest, which can be said about uh, this issue. It is permissible to use the word shay. Uh, that would be in specific contexts where there's a reason uh, to do so. Um, languages vary in how they accommodate um, the, the division of things into masculine and feminine. Uh, some have the new to gender, others don't. Um, a word being masculine or the use of pronouns does not necessarily mean, uh, does not actually reflect the reality of a thing. We gave the clear example, a pregnant woman is hamil, which is a masculine noun. Um, so, you know, that, 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 that proves the point. It shows that, you know, this is something merely uh, in the language. So I think that's what can be said in brief on, uh, on this issue on Allah.